see. We are live. We are live coming to you from Baltimore. Baltimore slash Timonium. Hopefully we're on the right. Hopefully we're on the right. Here we are. Yes, we are. Good afternoon, everyone. I see you guys out there. And we have the man of the hour all the way from Manchester, United Kingdom. What's up, Dave? What's up, Dave? There we go. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah, can we you hear can us? Hear you. Absolutely loud and uh, amazingly clear. Awesome. Awesome. A wishing you a wonderful evening on this fine Wednesday, November 4th. I can't believe we're already in November already. It's quite Friday. Special day for me, this. It's, it's, it's my daughter Ellie's birthday today. Ah, shout well, happy out. Happy birthday. Ellie shout out. out to Ellie. She might even be on the call tonight. Actually, let me just check. Let me see if she's here. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Uh, you can let me know if she comes. I will uh, give, give you a heads up. I'll give, I'll, give you the, I'll give you a thumbs up. How's that? Sounds How good. old's your daughter today, Dave? She is. <laughs> it's a good job I've got no hair because she's 13 today. I, oh we, we officially have three teenagers in the family today. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> scary just, times. Just my brother, wait. I love you. You're always in my prayers, you and your family. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> just, just wait until they get older. <laughs> just wait. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Carry on. You, 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 you know, you know what I'm saying. I anyway, do. I still remember when I was 13, Dave. I don't know about you. I remember when I was 13. It seems like yesterday, guys. I remember. Yeah. I remember. So I want to wish everyone a wonderful, good afternoon, a good evening. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, and I want to give a special thanks to all those individuals who continue to share and spread the word. About Dave Steele, the blind poet, and tea and poetry, and I want to uh, just you know say thank you for joining us week after week and uh, helping to 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 continue to spread the word. If you haven't already you. shared with your friends or family or neighbor, whoever it might be, please do so. This community is growing leaps and bounds, and we want to be able to continue to provide for you guys. So again, please uh, request that you continue to. Uh, spread the word. Uh, we are just a little after four o'clock here on the East Coast out of Timonium, Maryland, our headquarters. We're in our studio and the lights are shining quite bright, but uh, we're here. We're happy to be here. And we've been waiting for this. You know, it's, this is our weekly occurrence. And you know, for us, it's you know, we, 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 we live for this. It's, it's, you know, Dave, I know you're not here physically, but you're always with us here. But, mm -hmm. you know, we call out, you know, an hour, we like an hour to show time. You know, we, we have these like countdowns here in house and to make live sure. Live in five. Live in five. That's right. And uh, with the team got us set up here, I want to give a special shout out to Sedona Dave for setting right. up the studio Sedona today. Dave. Absolutely. Incredible, Sedona Dave. Always incredible. And I also want to, um, let's see, let me just go through a couple of things. I see a lot of familiar faces, a lot of new faces, so welcome. And let's go through some of those um, housekeeping things first. So uh, we will uh, continuously monitor the chat, the Q&A. And if you raise your hand, like Travis has already raised his hand. How are you, Travis? My number one razor, <laughs> Travis. Yeah, is. Come, Travis, I love it. You come in from the start with your hand raised. I love the energy. So if you want to get our, you know, you want to get our attention, you can raise your hand. And when you raise your hand, what that means is that you want to come say hello to Mr. B Fox, What's Dave that? Steele, and myself. And when you do come in and we admit you to a panelist, we encourage you to keep your video on. However, if you are feeling a little bit shy. Don't worry, we understand. So you can just keep your audio on. Whatever you feel comfortable with, that is the way we will roll. You can always send us a message through the Q&A, through the chat, whatever it is, we are monitoring and we will do our best to bring you in uh, at the next available moment. So yeah, so Dave, so tomorrow, is it tomorrow, tonight or tonight or tonight. tomorrow? Yeah, okay, uh -huh. so tonight, yeah, the United Kingdom is going into a new lockdown for, I believe it's for 30 days. Is that correct? Yeah, 
yeah, lockdown two, the revenge. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are, yeah, we're going to lockdown till um, till the second of December, mm. um, with potential um, it to be extended depending on the numbers. We've been talking over the last few weeks how the numbers have been kind of rising here. So yeah, um, kind of going into a lockdown, not as severe as the last time in the fact that the schools are still staying open. Um, schools and uni universities still That's open. Good. That's and important. Essential, um, essential shops, um, so supermarkets, places like that still, still open. But everywhere else, bars, restaurants, all, all the other kind of businesses all shut. People advise to stay at home and, um, you know, we're allowed to go out for exercise. But yeah, lockdown two starting from tonight. Um, um, just to see if we can kind of get the numbers down before we head into the, the festive period um, for Christmas and, uh, and the holidays. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. So, uh, but anyway, listen, tonight, um, yes. I, I, I'm always full of surprises. I was kind of wanting to play this a little bit kind of quieter tonight because I didn't know how the numbers were going to be with everything that's happening in America. Um, this is kind of a safe place. So no political talk tonight um, right. from, from anyone, but we're going to kind of drill into some really cool stuff tonight. Um, B Fox, before we start tonight, before I hit this first poem, I just want to say um, a massive, massive thank you to you uh, for the video that you put out earlier oh. today. Wow. I shared it on all my Stand By Me RP and Blind Poet pages. If you've not thank seen you. it yet, go to my page, go to the, the Low Vision Shop page on Facebook and check out the, the amazing video that was done in one take off the cuff from the heart uh, by b fox talking about everything that he's doing at the moment and his journey um you touched my heart tonight and inspired me um to look forward to tonight and and and, and just reaffirmed everything that we're doing and it's just uh, I, you're amazing mate uh, it's so good to have you as part of this team now i gotta ask you a question before you comment on that are you talking about that 60 second clip <laughs> wasn't are you talking about that 60 clip, second clip <laughs> I, or are you talking about a full version i uh i put a full version up on Ooh. facebook a full version a six minute version yeah wow yeah, that, six guys minute version, yeah. that's every a second okay. was amazing so yes Thank i you. encourage everyone to go ahead Thank listen you. to that video share that video it's a very important video it's tearful it's from the heart I cried a little bit and it's the <laughs> truth and most importantly, it was filmed here on site by a blind crew. Yes. So, yes, it was. I forgot to put that on there. Oh my god! You gosh. forgot to put that on there. I, I was. I was the most so important excited. piece I was of so the puzzle. Excited to put it up on Facebook and share with everybody. Oh my! I forgot to take put, it down. I'm gonna put a. I'm gonna put a uh, something on there. Um, what I want to say about that, Dave. Uh, you know, thank you so much. I saw that you saw that, and I was like, oh wow! And I, but I didn't realize that it meant that much to you. And thank you for that. And I wanted to say. Um, you know, Barry just asked me, can you do something for about one minute? And I go, I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go, oh, no problem. <laughs> Next thing I know, and I was like, I'm just going to do it in one take real quick. I, you know, because I, I know if you've done Unscripted. one of these, you could go for Unscripted. 25 takes and, you know, always try to do better. And I was like, I'm just going to go one take of this and, and, and give it to Barry. And one minute turned into six and, and uh, Barry said, can you cut that down to a minute? And I was like, woof. Like, I don't know, I don't know what to say though, you know, um, but the whole point was to talk about, um, there's a gap that happens between the time that you get diagnosed, at least in my experience, and to the point where you actually have an adaptive device put in front of you. to so like, like this could change your life. And, and some people I think are lucky enough that they go from the diagnosis directly into the blindness community and they meet somebody that's got a device and they go, oh, hey, this could help you. But I've known people personally, and, and being in this office with Barry here, thank you for donating the space to Blind Dance Studios. I love being up here. I sincerely love pleasure. it. My greatest pleasure. It's an honor to have you here. There's people that come up, and Barry's talking to them, and he'll hand them something, and it's just real quick, like an OrCam or something, or, or not an OrCam, because that, that's an incredible device that, that helps describe the world around, but, you know, like an iris vision. And then next thing you know, they're going, oh, my God gosh i can see right now and and i just hear that and my face lights up and so when i went to make this one minute video telling that story next thing i know i'm crying and you know uh that the rest you saw but thank you for watching it thank you for that comment and i'm done rambling now but yeah thank go, you, sir. go it, it go, was you know for anyone out there go watch it go listen to it 
um it's yeah it's it's amazing i, I love it and i'm so proud of you b i'm so Thank proud you. of you for that um, um but tonight we're going to get into more stuff um that's linked in with all that you were talking about tonight i said um it was going to be a kind of more relaxed evening tonight um and i lied because uh, instead of having one special guest we've got two Ooh, i love it. i'm full of surprises I, and i want to give a shout out to louise for feeling the energy tonight this afternoon high yeah. five high five louise high five um yeah so we got two special guests i'm going to kind of work out which order i want to bring them in you guys out there know who you are um i i will um tell you when it's time for you to come in and do your bit and i'll kind of guide you through the process because i know both these people are new to the call tonight um but that's pretty cool but i'll explain what we do in a minute i want to I kick off oh, with you, a piece go, of you kick something off and i want to share something also Go ahead. Yeah, I want to kick off kick off with a piece of poetry. Um, I've got something. I've got a couple of pieces tonight. I've, normally, I fit in two or three, maybe four pieces of poet, poetry. But tonight, I've, I've got two: one at the beginning, one at the end. And um, the the for those people that are new to the call, what we kind of do with this first with the first piece of poetry on every week, every time we do the tea and poetry, is uh, we get people's thoughts on things that they kind of related to within the poetry that I'm, I'm about to recite and um and, and I have barry and ben right here yeah barry and ben notes. kind of kick this off so um yeah i'm gonna take this away you ready we are ready okay i know there's strength inside of you though all you feel is numb don't be afraid as eyesight fades for what is still to come you will adjust in these words trust. We share these tunneled eyes, a mix of strength and anxiousness, the same in me applies. My shins are full of bruises and my confidence misplaced. At times self-isolated, felt the world too much to face. So I am here to remind you all the times we fail don't matter. There's lots of misconceptions still, let's remind them of the latter. It's not that complicated. Change how blindness is defined. Let's educate, articulate the many ways that we are blind. It's never all or nothing. Many shades and different views. Yet there's a stereotype they keep on printing in the news. No wonder some of us have fears when out in crowded place. They see the cane but can't explain why we look them in the face. There's some of us who stay at home convinced of the excuse that because we don't look blind enough, there's a need to be recluse. Mm. Don't waste your life on people whose opinions are way off. Just swipe your cane with courage, hold your head with pride aloft. So never doubt what we're about, despite what some believe. Come join me on my mission, change the way we are perceived. Won't let the haze that fill my eyes consume the rest of me. There's more to life than the edge of knife despite what I can't see. Try not to care as people stare with looks of vague suspicion, but why should I explain to them the terms of my condition? Though it's much simpler to stay home, won't waste another day. There's pity, sorry, their pity's just an obstacle that's getting in my way. Though I am blind, won't be confined by others' misconceptions. This poetry that spills from me will change their blind perceptions. Though anxious chest and days depressed have far from disappeared, I've learned to breathe while I still grieve, control these things I've feared. My kids look on, not on what's gone, but all each day I teach. For if tomorrow their eyes pay, their, so life's dreams are still in reach. So I'll not cry as vision die, won't focus on the blur. No point in holding on to how those days and eyes once were. Wow. My pen was nonstop writing there, Dave. That one's intense. And I think we, uh, yeah, that one's intense. I just saluted you, Dave. Audio description. <laughs> Audio description, Niagara Falls coming down. I don't know what you're talking days. about. I don't know what you're talking about. Audio uh, description, Niagara Falls. No, no, we got a graphics guy doing some superimposed tears or something. I don't know what's Oh, uh, wow. So, knocking out the park B, right off the bat. Take it away, B. I want you know, anything that pops. 
I mean, obviously a lot. It, 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 well, right to your heart. You know, I'll comment right away. I think that's like a magnum opus from our from our man Dave Steele. And then second of all, like I, I got a comment on the leg because it appropriately just kept going. And and I needed to lean in further as it as it went. And you know, um that's powerful, Dave. And and not only did you put the words to it, but you kept people's hearts there. And 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 the interesting thing, and I, I think that anybody that's that's been around um art that's created around blindness or, or a specific topic of, of any kind of loss or struggle in life or or something beautiful that you're achieving as a process but you can maybe push that line too far not you Dave but a person and and that whole poem I was gonna be like where's this gonna go is this, is this gonna stay this powerful the next line and it did and is it gonna stay that powerful the next line and it did and I'm like oh it this is why going. I got this little message from my man Dave so said I'm really looking forward to tonight yep but wow yeah, that's my Dave, new favorite Dave Steele poem. I, you know what, Dave? I have to say, you know, you know what my favorite one is, but yeah. this one I think uh, just takes it over the top wow. because it just it connects with me and the energy that we have here and the work that we're doing. I, I, you know, to me, that's where the connection is for me. So I, um, you know, we talk about misconceptions. We're all about breaking down misconceptions. We're talking about educating, awareness. We are all about that. Um, strength inside, the courage to move forward, um, the control, self-control, um, you know, changing the way people are perceived. We are all about that. You, 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 you know, we're, I look at it from a, from a different you know, dimension, but these are everything. I think that every day when we walk into the office as a team, we look to accomplish and to break down those barriers, misconceptions, and push ourselves to a higher level. So, yeah, I look forward to reading that one on um, on a stage with a microphone in front of on American audience. soil. On yeah. American soil. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, put thoughts out there in the comments. Yeah, absolutely. anyone the comments in the, in are, the chat? Are co the comments chat? are coming in. Uh, Louis says, "Powerful." Uh, the things that we wish we could say to everyone without needing to say it. Yeah, that yeah. is powerful. Yeah. That is powerful. So very yeah. true. Okay, so. listen, I want to try and fit as much in tonight. So um, I, I've got a couple of people out there. I'm going to call the first one in. The second one, um, we won't be long to you. Um, the first person I'd like to call in, I, I want to kind of explain why I've got this person on the call tonight, and we'll kind of go from there. Uh, it's become, going to become very apparent. I've never spoke to this person before, um, but this morning I woke up to just a wonderful message. I, I Quite often I get messages from people all over the world um, who kind of follow me on my page, who have maybe followed me for a while and, and maybe stayed in the background and not come forward to kind of get in touch with me. And um, this person did, did that today. They'd followed me for a while. So awesome. can we bring in um, a great name, by the way, Jennifer Britton. Yes. Um, cool into the call. I like that name. Yeah, it's a great name. Um, the question so, yeah, is, Jennifer is Britton into the call. Jennifer from, the great, from great Britain? No, she's not. She's from, um, I believe, uh, I want to say Canada. All right. That's yeah. correct. Hey, hey, Jennifer, how are you? What's up? I'm very good. How are you? Doing great. It's an honor to have you here. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Where so Jen Jennifer, I just want to say, from? oh God, no, sorry, God, uh, you're asking. So what part of uh, Canada, Jennifer, where where from? Canada are I'm, you? I'm from the capital, right in the Ottawa region. Oh, very nice. Yes. Not too far from us. So cool. Jennifer, um, before we kind of get into it, can you just kind of explain your message today and uh, that you sent me this uh, last night? Uh, I got this morning and um, and kind of explain how we came to or you, how you came to kind of know about me. Of course. Well, my son, who is now 17, um, lost his vision due to LHON, which is it's a it's a, a rare one. It's Lieber's hereditary optic neuropathy. So when he was 14, he started to lose his vision, um, but had a pretty powerful journey, to be honest with you. He like thrives through his vision loss. He didn't go into 
I, I don't want to say the typical bout of depression that I know a lot of people go through, especially at his age. He took it and changed himself personally all the way around. He does nothing but try and grow as a person. He's extremely well read. You know, he's into politics and law and he just, he loves his new life. And it's very interesting because to be honest, I knew nothing about the blind community. And then all of a sudden this happens to my son. We land in the hospital, we spend a month there. They, we left the hospital and had no idea what his diagnosis was. So we, I kind of felt like it wasn't real to be honest with you and neither did he. So we were like faking it, like just kind of faking it through life at the beginning. Um, so he turned to social media right away and I was like, I don't know what else to tell you, but like check YouTube. I'm sure you're gonna find like some cool people that are probably blind. Like I have no idea. Anyways, and that's of course what he found. Um, the first one he discovered was Sam from The Blind Life. I'm nice. Sure. Like, yeah, big, good friend big of ours. Fan of ours. Big fan. <laughs> oh yeah, my son adores him. So it it just was the first person that he had that connection with. And like Ben, you were saying about you know getting that first device, that adaptive piece. You've actually spoken to my son before, Ben. I remember. Um, I remember yeah. very well. Wow, uh, small world. Yeah, it is. I know it is such a small world. It's so funny. So actually, you know, and then that led him into, you know, learning about all these other people and myself as well. So then I started following and watching and learning and seeing how amazingly supportive the blind community is. I was blown away. Um, but it took us about nine months. And then at nine months of, you know, losing his vision, when we finally got the diagnosis of LHON, and strangely enough, there's an organization in Canada that was formed literally like weeks before he started to lose his vision. And they reached out to us, um, hearing our story. And within days of my son getting his diagnosis, they held their very first ever conference of people with LHON to get together. And it was a life changing moment for him. He showed up there and met other blind people who are living fabulous lives. And he walked away going, wow, you know what? I, I can absolutely do anything. Like he goes, look at these. If, if other people can do it, I can do it. Now he's got aspirations. He's, you know, he's applying to universities, taking political science. He wants to get a law degree. And I have no doubt he'll do it he's honestly one of the smartest people I know and he just he lives for information and thriving and he's actually written a, a poem himself that he had submitted at school and it was about his vision loss as well and you know that's when we had kind of found you you know like blind poetry and things like that and it just kind of spiraled from there so yeah I've been kind of watching you and your posts and all these sorts of things and I just love to spread the love myself too so you know I was like I never comment I never like I never hit anything so and I'm more of a personal person I guess you could say so to me like the little likes and comments aren't as important as you know like a true hey this is what I think about your posts and your family you know so I just wanted to send you a little shout out like that so that's where that came from in my world that's awesome Jennifer I'm, I'm so happy you're here and to hear all the wonderful accomplishments uh it sounds like your son is just you know really got a head on his shoulders heading down a, you know a tremendous path to you know continued success it's a know, remarkable public remarkable speaker, as a matter of fact remarkable public yeah speaker. Oh, he's share his story it actually that's one of his passions is is sharing i guess the um the abilities of you know people with low vision that he he blows people away constantly we've actually done many things and we've gotten through many hours with people and they're like, wait a minute, hold up. Like this kid can't see <laughs> like, no way. Like people don't even believe it. Right. We actually, this summer went on. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of like the tree talk trekking things, you know, you like yeah, harness absolutely. up and you're uh -huh. like, we went we and he forgot. he forgot his king. So I'm like, well, like, you know, we're going to tell them like whatever we get there and we'd filled out our waivers and I told him he was blind, but he's done it before when he could see. So we're like, we're just going to wing it and see what happens. Guide shows up. We all went out. He did the whole course perfectly, to be honest, he did it way better than I did. And at the end we're walking away and he kind of like kicked a stump and just like barely tripped a little bit. Didn't fall. And the guy turns, he's like, Oh, come on. What are you like? He, he made some a funny comment and we all laughed. We're like, Oh, this guy doesn't even know he's blind. This is great. We made it through the whole day. He, he faked it totally and nobody even knew he was blind like he does these things it's so incredible and his vision is very far gone to be honest his he's lost his complete central vision so he only has just a very blurred peripheral but that kid honestly he's figured out how to do 
everything just fine. So, you know, he still lives with me, of course, but, uh, you know, I have no doubt he's going to get out in the world and thrive. And especially having, you know, inspirations and people to watch like you guys that, you know, just are living a great life. It's pretty awesome to, you know, connect with you guys too. So I super appreciate it. I, w- I want to ask as well, uh, and I'm sure, Ben, you can kind of give um, Jennifer more details on this. Uh, you know, if you guys are already registered for the Thriving Blind Summit next weekend. You read my mind, Dave. You read my mind. Uh-huh. Because, um, yeah, that, oh, you know, I don't know if you're aware of it. I, 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 do you know who um, someone called Kristen Smedley is? No, I don't. Ben, let's get you him connected. To get yourself Absolutely. registered ASAP. No, no charge, correct? It's uh, complimentary, correct? Correct. Yeah. Correct. So, do you want Ben? Do you, want to, yeah. do you want do you want okay. to give Jennifer a, a kind of a brief overview of what's happening? Um, Absolutely. On the, yeah, on the weekend. Yeah. So next week, right? Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That's the twelfth, thirteenth, and fourteenth is the Succeed Without Sight Summit. And what I love about it, it's the first of its kind. It's unprecedented. It's all online and it's, it's uh, just kind of formed organically is the cool story behind this. Kristen Smedley is the mother on a mission. She has two young boys or they're not so young anymore. Uh, one's Don't a forget her daughter and a daughter. I was going to say one's a college, they're, they're blind. One's a college student at Penn State and the other is a high school senior. And she also has a daughter who's 16 just started driving. So that's very cool. But uh, this is a summit by the blind for the world. And what's really mm-hmm. interesting about that, it's like, it's not to talk to a whole bunch of folks in the community that are blind about how to go out and succeed. It's to talk to our friends, our families, our coworkers, and the people in our communities around us. Because how many times, Barry, do people go, well, how do you accomplish this or how do you accomplish that? And, and we're having this discussion right. back and forth. This is the place where if you have any questions, how I do cool stuff in my world, this is a place we're going to go. does some really cool stuff. And I'll tell you, there's tools, though, and we're in a room full of the tools that help us do it. And there's there's little, little you know, tricks to the trade. And there's cool things that we're going to talk about. Like, have you ever thought about hiring someone blind? You haven't ever thought about it? Well, you should. And let's tell you how we succeed in the workplaces we're already in. Really looking forward to it. So come out next week. And Friday night is teen night. And Sedona Dave is going to do a workshop and design a shirt with the teams there giving input. And he's sending out some shirts for them to even try out. So... We're excited about that. Can, can you just uh, list um, off a few people that are involved in this as well that are going to be speaking? Well, Mr. Dave Steele himself. What well, are you going to be I'm doing? Not, apart from me. <laughs> Have you got a special phone prepared? Oh, I already of asked you that last week. <laughs> of course you did. What kind of questions? Of That's I, I was hoping you'd give us a reread of this one we just heard today. Well, if you'd like, I think yeah, that would fit pretty well, to be honest. So maybe, so. maybe I think, yeah. Jennifer, uh, I want to tell you, you know, you remind me so much of Kristen. I, I, you way, took it, took the right? words. Absolutely. And the way you, again, you have how, your, your son's name? Ethan. Ethan. Eth, the way you explain, yeah. you know, the way you talk about Ethan and you describe his, you know, is just overall in, in being this incredible individual and always wanting more and to strive for more and to accomplish and succeed. It sounds exactly like Kristen's two boys, Mitchell and Michael. And so, I mean, you know, I think right, Mitchell's the older one, right? Who's in Penn. And yeah. Kristen was telling us that, you know, I don't know, I don't know what the normal uh, amount of credits someone takes in college, maybe 18 credits a semester. That's pretty. 12. I, I like 12. 12. Okay. Words. Okay. Okay. So my son's in the middle there. Um, anyway, so I think like 18 credits is, is, is around what someone should be taking. Kristen's son, older son, Mitchell in Penn is taking, I think, 29 credits, like almost like literally a double curriculum. And this is someone with sight loss. And so he is on a mission. And again, like you were saying, people don't believe that he's living with sight loss. And it just, it sounds like you, you know, Ethan is a a, a mini Mitchell. Hey, can we drop uh, Uh, a link in the chat for this summit? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, blinddance.org forward slash summit 2020. Yeah, in fact, we can, um, I'm sure we have, Jennifer, I'm sure we have your email. I can send you yes. a link if you need a, uh, a link. And um, uh, yeah, I could probably pop it in right now, actually. Yeah. But yeah, so. Jennifer, if you get anything from tonight, um, be at that summit next weekend because, um, you know, us getting you connected with Kristen and, uh, and, and all the other people that are going to be on this call 
um, you know, people like Kirk Adams from AFB, the president of the AFB, uh, opening it up with myself, um, lots of amazing speakers. Um, it's just going to be a fantastic experience like never before. I, I swear to God, this thing is going to be incredible. And I'm such I'm so honored to be part of it. And first of all, you know, before we kind of uh, say goodbye to you and move on, because uh, we've got lots to kind of fit in tonight, uh, Jennifer, I just want to say, you know, I, I, how, how um, grateful I am. And I know I mentioned this to you before when we were talking on Messenger, I never take for granted, and Barry and Ben will back me up with this, I never take for granted uh, people um, using my poetry in the way that you guys have uh, and uh, and using it to kind of, you know, get through certain days and, and inspire. Um, and yeah, it, it just, um, it, it keeps me going. I love that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. And hey, maybe I sent you that message for the right reason. Now we're going to connect for next weekend, right? So it's, it's all about timing. Listen, all what, about yeah, timing. What do we always say, Barry? Everything happens for a reason. reason. And uh, the timing with this mission that we're on of, of people coming into play at the right time is something that everyone out there that's followed us for a while is seeing firsthand um, all the time. These things happen, especially especially on team poetry. Absolutely. We would love to have, if you wouldn't mind, we would love to have Ethan on as a guest one day. Oh, Good absolutely. Love uh, it. Definitely, 100%. I'd love to yeah, reach whenever he's available, guys. please let us know. Yep, most definitely. He'll be he'll be thrilled nice. too. Nice. Th thank you for coming on, Jennifer. And I hope you'll stay with us for the rest of the call. Absolutely will. <laughs> awesome. Take, Take care. care. I'm, I'm going to send you, you back as a, uh, an attendee. So thanks so much again. And we'll thank see you. My best to Ethan. Absolutely. Hope thank to meet him you. one day in the near future in person. Yeah, come visit in Baltimore. I would love to once I can get out of you know my country and stuff. <laughs> yeah. We'll have a party with Dave still and you guys too. Awesome. That's good. So yeah, um, you know, lots to kind of fit in tonight. I want people to get interactive. If you've got anything to ask in the chat, uh, people that want to get on, uh, please, you know, get involved. Um, I want to move straight on to our next kind of caller so we can fit as many people in as possible. Um, so I had another message uh, I got this morning, got, I got the first message uh, not so long ago uh, with regards to a project. Now, we're always talking about how um, we, you know, we want to create awareness within our community, but the, the real key is getting it outside of our community. Right. Correct. And we're all about spreading that message. And as you're just saying with the summit there about getting our friends, our family, our loved ones, people outside of the low vision community to understand more, break down these misconceptions and help people in different ways. And uh, I was approached by um, a, a, a young lady that's on the call tonight um, who um, is a student at a, uh, a university in Scotland uh, in Dundee. And I wanted to come on and talk about what she's doing tonight, because this is going to be really interesting, especially for you, B. I'm sure you're going to really appreciate what we're going to be talking about here. And I really want to get interactive with this next bit. So everyone that's out there listening in, well, I'm um, excited. What, we're going to be, what we're going to be talking about now is something that we've not spoke about on any of the calls before, but it's really cool and something that I think a lot of people out there can relate to. Um, so can we bring in Anna? Yes. Anna, Anna, Anna. I'm looking you ready for Anna. this, B? I'm ready, brother. I am looking for I Anna. I know you love surprises. Uh, sure. Anna, yes. Anna, Anna, Anna Mitchell Moore. Is that correct? Yeah, that's the one. All right, Anna. Coming right up. We're feeling, uh, you know, you're trying to uh, balance the power here from the UK. Yeah, well, yeah, we've gone Canada. Uh, we've got obviously yeah. USA as always. Uh, now we're going to Scotland. Hi. Awesome. Hey, Anna, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you? We're doing great. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. Um, All the way welcome. from Dundee. Where All is Dundee? Dundee. Um, it's further north than Edinburgh, but not too far up. Yeah, about an hour from Edinburgh. If you, I know, know, if you know this, Anna, I, we, we didn't speak, you know, when we spoke earlier today, I actually lived in Scotland for the best part of 10 years. Oh, really? um, my my daughter is Scottish. She lives in Glasgow. I lived in Glasgow for ten years. I I've been to Dundee many many times. I've sang and performed up there, um, so I know it very well. Um, but so uh, just to kind of introduce yourself to uh, to everyone that's out there and and, and being and uh, and Barry, can yeah. you um, just kind of give a brief outline to who you are, what you do, and how we came to communicate and be in touch? 
Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm Anna and I'm a product design student um, from Scotland. So I'm in my fourth year of product design. So I'm doing my big final project. Um, and I've always had an interest in kind of design for inclusivity and more universal design. So doing things that like, work for everybody. Um, but I've always had a strong interest um, with visual impairment and the uh, volunteering for guide dogs and stuff as well but my final year project I kind of want to look into the dating experience um, and how we can make that more inclusive and more universal but less about visual like visual appearance because I think everyone's kind of too even myself included too caught off on like what people look like and you know how we're perceived visually and I think it's less about human connection and I kind of want to break down that barrier and yeah Bringing you Absolutely. Kind of when you think about the dating apps that are going around these days, I mean, Tinder is the one that kind of everyone kind of thinks of these days. And that's all visual. It's about how someone looks and nothing but and you swipe left or swipe right. Not that yeah. I've ever been on Tinder. Yeah. <laughs> the wife's hey, have you ever, have you ever been on Tinder? <laughs> Never. Well, yeah, exactly. Never um, been there either. Yes, yeah, so it's all visual. So I think the, the, the key was, you know, when we were talking this morning is how do people with low vision and blindness um, fit in in that kind of environment and just to kind of kick off you know I want to get to B and his opinion and then everyone out there let's talk about this you know I was saying um, just to kind of give a brief uh, overview of our conversation today with you know that myself and Anna had I was saying that um, you know a big thing for people with low vision and blindness uh, when dating someone outside of the the blind community is that you're having to go across these barriers of First of all, the misconceptions that are out there that people will, you know, not know whether, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're blind or you have low vision or not, unless you explain to them. Um, they may think, you know, those misconceptions that you either blind or not at all, and that, you know, they don't know there's many shades of blindness, all those kind of things that we talk about on a weekly basis. There's also the thing of um, when someone is, you know, getting involved with someone with a disability or with low vision or blindness, that they might think that, you know, it might put them off because they might think, oh, well, I might have to be a carer to this person. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the, the the person who with the disability or the visual impairment might think I might be a burden to this person. So that's a barrier. Um, talking about also, some real things, brother. <laughs> yeah, there's also the barriers that we've spoken about before in the past of, you know, when we are in a social environment like a bar or a restaurant and because people with low vision can't pick up on social uh, cues such as body gestures and, and, and hand movements and, and things like that, that sometimes we feel withdrawn in those kind of settings, especially in low light or noisy environments where we can't pick up on lip reading um, that we do subconsciously, that sometimes we, we, we become more withdrawn and anxious. So there's lots of kind of things um, that kind of fall into that play. And I really wanted to get Anna on tonight to kind of talk about her project more. Let's see if we can assist her and given her some kind of information and background on how we feel in our personal experiences. I've done mine, B, let's start with you. Um, anything you want to kind of add to, you know, what I've just spoke about? Wow. So pretty much everything you said, I, I felt like myself. Um, definitely. So I'll get back to that in a second. Like the actual interaction of the app I would be interested. So you're developing like a, an app online? Um, not necessarily. I'm kind of more looking into like human connection, whether that turns out to be an app or not. Okay. I think it's my, maybe something that could be brought to a date, um, maybe physically in person, but it can be interpreted by everybody. Um, and yeah, designing okay. for everyone that's in, inclusive of sight loss mm -hmm. and kind of bringing a kind of more tactile and more connected experience to dating that's not about, um, you know, appearance. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I sit on a, if I go on a date, I sit there and I'm constantly, what do I look like? Am I eating weird? Like, but if that was taken away, I feel it would kind of bring a different experience. And I feel like I really want to learn from people that have experienced sight loss and it, don't need to have that factor. And they, I feel like my assumption is that people with sight loss much, will feel maybe a much stronger connection to someone, um, whether it's spiritually um, or like physically. I don't know. One hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, B, B you'll you'll agree with this. You know, yeah. we talk about every week on how 
um, you know, people with low vision, I myself can testify to this, that when I started to lose my sight, that made me view the world in a completely different way and view people and life in a completely different way. I use the little tunnel of sight that I have to focus on the important things in life yes. and look past the visual. Um, and I'm sure that's something that a lot of people out there can kind of relate to. Um, I love that. I relate to that. And, and I have so many more questions for you. That I, I feel a relative because I want to understand, but for time's sake, are you are you visually impaired or are you just interested in this generally to help our community? Um, obviously I wear glasses, but I'm not not majorly. I have okay. I do have an uh, issue with my muscles and my eyes not working properly. I don't know what the correct term is because they never want to tell me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, is that what is that what drove you to get involved with the sight loss community? Kind of, yeah. Um, I'm kind of aware that I think my vision's gonna. Um, deplete as I get older kind of being told that but it's more a good community waiting for you <laughs> I think it's more that I just have a real respect for people that um, have low vision because you know the, it's an inv invisible disability and you're still completely able um, it's just that factor that's that's gone and I just think that there should be much more provisions in place to make it uh, things inclusive and accessible um, and I feel like we can just really learn from people that that have uh, low vision or sight loss because it is just, yeah. I, well, I learned. <laughs> yeah. I've, got, I've, I've got an answer real quick for that. I just wanted to ask. So I want to go, understand go, go, that real go, quick go, go. Um, because I, I think it's such a, a beautiful thing you're doing, and I love I love this whole idea, and I've got a whole bunch of ideas. So if I understand correctly, you're you're looking to just change the dating experience for people who are interested in that, whether they're disabled or not, or differently. Yeah. Cool. Um, and it may be an app, it might be a product, you're open, you're just, you're open and you're researching and you're yeah. capable. And once you know what to do, you're going to go do it. So <laughs> you're doing product research right now. Yeah. Okay. Have you started the actual development already it. of this project? Pardon? You're doing it right now. Have, you're already like well involved as far as the overall yeah, so I start, our semester started at the start of October, so it's more just at the moment, um, I kind of just reached out to Dave on a whim, thinking that he might not reply to me. Uh, <laughs> oh, Dave had a conversation this morning, and then here I am. So, yeah, kind of research is what's really going to shape the project, I think. Um, for me, I kind of, I work physically in more physical products, um, at me as a designer, but like I am open to user-based design what well. type of design do you, I mean I know this, this sounds more like a little maybe more industrial design is that what would you say this is more industrial design uh yeah I guess so um product design kind of have, has a big spectrum of things correct um, what, so. what do you uh I, I understand this project but what are you where do you, where's your passion as far as when it comes to design and um, fashion <laughs> is it you know physical products like desks and chairs you know uh, it's more just like inclusivity design I guess so it's like I don't know I've done cutting aids in the past um, that, you've done what cutting aids in the kitchen for people oh for cutting you. aids cutting aids yeah Very important. <laughs> it's really um, um I'd like to just answer that that question and I'll be brief on it but so I think that it's very important for for me especially and for I think other people that are assessing their future with vision loss. Cause I don't know about you, Dave, but myself, I was like, what will my own future look like for myself? And is if, it, you know, a person single, like I am, I'm like, okay, well, what is that going to be like for my future family or a future significant other? And it's hard to predict my own future with this vision loss. And there's so many things I'd love to say to even get started to go on a date. Like, like Dave said, when do I talk? Sign him up, sign him up. All these types of things. So here I, I've actually thought about this for a long time and thank you for this opportunity to tell you this. Like, I was out on a date and the last time that I was really significantly dating was a decade ago. And the reason that I stopped dating was, you know, not quite a decade ago, but, but right when like my driving was, was done really like, and, and, and I had someone I'd asked out and I wasn't legally blind yet, but I wasn't safe to drive. And I wasn't really no, I not using my cane yet, this weird spot that happens to so many people probably on this call. And it wasn't that I decided not to date anymore. It wasn't it at all. I just lost the ability to explain myself. Right. And then because of that, and so I think this is key. Thank you for this opportunity. So if there was some way to, with, without being whiny, where I could still have some dignity and have class about it, just say, 
what are the top 10 things you wish you could tell somebody before you even said hello? But keep it short, simple, and help people through that process so there's no 25 word ramble. It's just like, or actually, 25 words might be good. I mean, like a 25 paragraph ramble. Just 10 things that you wish you could tell somebody before you say hello. Like, by the way, I can see a little bit from my center vision. Uh, I won't be able to pick you up. And also, uh, here's some things I don't like to do because I, I get nervous in large crowds or people are moving around a lot. So I prefer right. if we go have somewhere to sit down. Like if you had that somehow before I even met somebody, that would make it feel a lot safer. So Tinder is kind of like that, but Tinder is too fast paced. Just way it's too funny, fast actually. paced. Can I just cut, kind of cut yeah, in there? That's all I have to yeah, say. Just I, I really have a lot of hands about it. that are so raised. That that I I yeah, I want to get, I want, let's get involved with the people. I just want to say one thing before we do that. We actually had um, a, a, a friend of mine who lives in Edinburgh who was on the call a few weeks ago called Gavin Neat. And he has an app called Welcome. And That's what I was thinking about, brother. Exactly. And what Welcome does for customer service is the same thing, you know, we, you could do for the dating community. Um, Anna, we'll, we'll, I'll get you a link to the episode with Gavin on uh, because mm-hmm. watching it... I have kind of an idea that I'm not going to... Is talk about right now, but okay. I want to well, talk, we'll, we'll talk to Anna offline. We'll, yeah, we'll co- connect with Anna off this call. Um, but yeah, you know, something like the Welk map, um, for those of that were on previous weeks, we'll have seen that. Um, you know, is exactly what you just said there, B. Wouldn't All right, be something cool. All right, I'm gonna bring in a couple people here at once, and I'm gonna start with Diane because I know Diane, um, probably has something very valuable to share. So I'm gonna bring Diane in. And I'm also going to bring Gloria Ooh, in Diana as well. You. What's up? And then I will bring Julie. I will bring you in shortly after. And Travis, we didn't forget about you. Diane, you are live. Hi. Hi, everyone. How are you? What's up? Hey, hi. Diane. Hi. What's I don't up? know. Is my video on or no? It's not. How do I do that? Uh, let me see ah, if I can send you mind. a request. Ask, there you are. Hey, I wanted to show Dave. What's up? Let me see. Look at that. Bring, uh, bring, tilt Hello. the camera down a little. Hey, down? Gloria. Yeah, right there, right there. Oh, Dave? look at that. <laughs> <laughs> is that what I think it is? It is. Just, it is. Just so Anna knows, Diane is Blind wearing po- my Blind Poet hoodie, my merch. Navy blue Blind <laughs> Poet Loving hoodie. Loving that. Loving that. That's awesome. Absolutely. Yes. So I wanted to just mention to Anna, I do a support group for um, for the low vision specialist. And about a month ago, the topic that I picked was unconscious bias. So I did a brief study with people, did a little research um, questionnaire regarding dating and visual impairments. And um, it was, it was, quite interesting there were some people were like brutally honest and you know other people just would answer yes and no but the thing that I came away with in that study is there are so many people who are blind and visually impaired who are prejudiced against dating somebody who's blind or visually impaired wow (laughs) and and Ben I hate to tell you this but it was like 80% 80% of blind women said they would not date a blind guy. Oh, wow. wow. That really yeah. surprises oh, wow. me. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, oh. I thought it was the other way. I thought that people, and we spoke about this with Anna this morning, about how people sometimes stick with their own community because mm-hmm. of the fear of awkwardness of those, those things that I spoke about at the beginning. So you found it the other way. That's really Found it the other way. And what's wow. really... Um, We'll interesting is the number one factor of why they feel that way is because of transportation they want somebody who can drive oh. uh, okay yeah I, i'm with you Drop there. The I mic. Understand that. <laughs> makes a lot of sense but, <laughs> but it, yeah it's it's you're yeah. kind of like well geez <laughs> <laughs> you, you just killed b's hopes and dreams i right know then. Yeah. i know <laughs> I thought you were going to come on. Uh, Diane's coming on. I'm like, mm-hmm. Diane's coming on with some great news for me. She's like, man, I got some bad news. <laughs> well, Anna's going to change it. Anna's, Anna's going to change it. Yes, she is. Absolutely. Yes, she is. But no, okay. But another interesting fact was that people who are in a long term relationship with a sighted person or married to a sighted person said they their next, <laughs> their next um, relationship would be with somebody who is visually impaired. 
they kind of like had enough of the whole sighted partner. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I would love to take all that data and go further with it. So, uh, you know, Anna? Super interesting. <laughs> we would yeah, love to help yeah, you out absolutely. with this. Let's get you, uh, get you connected. Yeah. Hey, Gloria, go ahead. Yes. Um, hi, everyone. I hey, wanted Gloria. to comment hey, on, uh, on Anna and um, also Dave Still's poem. Um, but Anna first. I have been a widow for the last 11 years, and I have tried <laughs> several, several different dating sites, right? Yeah. And I, I give pictures of myself and my guide dog, um, explain, you know, that I am visually impaired or low vision, that I still have some vision, but no one reads the profiles. They see my beautiful pictures, mm -hmm. and I get all kinds of, you know, um, comments and messages. But when I really start talking and chatting with someone, they, they haven't read my profile mm. because I say, do you know I'm visually impaired? No, <laughs> you know, they, they don't, don't read. read. They can see, but they don't read. Interesting. Yeah. That is very yeah. interesting. You know? And um, on eHarmony, I actually know somebody who, um, a, a male who's, who's a blind guy, and they actually told him, you cannot have your cane in the picture. Wow, what? really? Yep. yep. What? <laughs> yep. That's crazy. <laughs> crazy. Mm -hmm. By the way, I will never let anyone tell me that. I just, I won't be involved. Oh, with I know anybody. you won't, Ben. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Did they Good give mark. a reason to that, or did they just remove the photo? They told him, I don't, I don't know. Um, he just said that they would not let him have his cane in the picture. Mm -hmm. He actually, he ended up meeting somebody they've been married for a while, but so I guess she um, found out eventually. <laughs> uh, imagine she did. <laughs> Over that, you, you, know, just spilt, you just spilt to, the to news. Those, <laughs> to to those that, that are wanting to date and they don't drive, you know, now I really like the Uber and the Lyft. You know, here I live in Florida and I can take Lyft anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't have to meet someone in a dangerous place. I can take Lyft and go to a nice restaurant, you know, someplace public. Sure. I think, I mm -hmm. think also there'd be a big difference in opinions um, from you know, visually impaired men to visually impaired um, or blind women. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because I think, you know, from a guy's point of view, you know, it's that kind of, uh, guys, you know, have that kind of pride of, you know, wanting to be the protector and, you know, wanting to do, wanting, you know, to, to drive the lady t on, on the date and open the doors and, and be confident in all these kind of places that we maybe feel a bit anxious in. So, you know, Mm -hmm. that, that, I think that would definitely come into play with people's kind of experiences. Well, Gloria, the thing sorry. is, you're, Gloria, you're going was, to want point to get to know someone first. Absolutely, yeah. You know, before you meet someone, you chat, you talk on the phone, you do video chats. You know, I can see someone on a video chat because of my tunnel vision. You know, I have RP. Mm -hmm. And... Um, but even if you're totally blind, you still need to chat with people, show other people the pictures. Yeah. As before I start chatting with anyone, I snap a picture. I have it in my photos. So there's safety too to be concerned with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I see oh, oh, we have Orly here. I, Orly has oh. come in under the skies What's of up, Fox. Orly? <laughs> Hi, Orly. Hi guys. Hi. Sorry if I sound this way. I've been listening to everything since the beginning. Um, I wanted to add that I met my husband on a dating site, off a dating site, website. And um, it was an interesting process, I'll tell you that, especially not being able to see. And this was years ago in 2005 when it just really started launching. And uh, I'm surprised to hear about the gentleman that you mentioned, Diane, that couldn't yeah. have his cane in the picture. Yep. Because huh. my, my pictures all had either a guide dog or a cane or 
I was never advised of any, you know, to change anything or limit myself. So. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine why that would be, would be an issue, but it's just very interesting to hear. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for your insights. It's really, really useful. Um, Julie, I'm unmuting you right now. So if you want to share something, hopefully you'll be able to. There you are. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. No, I just wanted to say that I'm on the other end of that, having married my high school sweetheart and now as a senior citizen, you know, and getting to uh, the point where I'm not the same person that he was or I was when we married. But here's what I want to tell you. In my career, I was a marriage and family counselor. And all of us, all of us, all of you single people, do not for a minute think that you are not good enough are unworthy and and who said that did you say that somebody said that about you use your cane you use your dog you do what you have to do to advocate for yourself do yes. not have, so mm -hmm. here's the grandma in me you know and the professor in me coming out and telling you do not live in what you think other people are saying about you you Love are that. all yes. worthy and you have every right to do everything you want and happiness that you want. And so do not, <clears throat> telling you, do not get in that mode because you got this, guys. You got may this. I, may I add something, please? Yes. Of course. Go for it. Um, I wanted to say that I hemmed and hawed about mentioning my visual impairment on my profile or during the time of school conversation at what point I, I even him then hot about resumes and where to add that information I realized and I decided to do it from the get-go and many especially mm -hmm. sorry men many men don't read a lot of the details on profiles they go by looks they go by pictures that's why they miss out on some details like you know I'm visually impaired or whatever in the profile but I wanted to say that I decided to add it in the body of my description right from the get-go because if it weeded out certain people, then I'd rather have not started a conversation mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the hopes that it wouldn't affect them or impact them or bother them. That yes. I'd rather have gone moving forward with that being in the forefront right away. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this reminds me of a quote from Dr. Seuss. <laughs> <laughs> it, it oh, goes, those who matter don't mind and those absolutely. who mind don't those matter in my, absolutely oh. <laughs> i use that quote a lot in fact i've used yeah. that in my poetry mm. uh, can I just, just, uh, uh, gloria um you had a you had a, um, a point to make about the poem uh but just want to kind of squeeze that in yes i i love your poetry because i mean it it hits me where i live in my heart <laughs> there i mean there's times yes that um, i stay in the house too long and then when i go out for my walk i mean i have a i have a nice neighborhood you know the only thing that scares me to death is other people walking their little dogs and my guide dog i'm not sure what it is he wants to lunge after the dogs Oh, no. And <laughs> and so, so after after I'm nearly killed, you know, mm -hmm. by him dragging me down, uh, I, that's happened to me one time too many. And uh, so then I'm in the house for a while, and it's like, no, it's time for me to go again. So I I love these meetings, and I love to read your poetry because it just tells me you've got to get out there and stay out there. <laughs> You can't just stay in the house. Absolutely. That's for sure. That is for sure. Yes. We're going to take that what out. we're all about. Out. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, Travis, I'm going to unmute you as well, because I know you've been waiting patiently to join. So you are here. And um, how are you, Travis? Hang on a second. Hello there. How are you? Hey, Travis. Hi, Travis. Hey, everybody. <laughs> How's it going? Doing good. great. Yeah. Doing great. Good. Very good. It's so good to be on this group, especially whew, day after a big election, I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, oh boy. Yeah, I'll tell I'll tell you. Th this is really interesting topics here, I, I must say. Um 
you know, I, I, I'm, there's a lot to this. Um, I, I don't know where to start, but like, uh, hang on a second. Uh, anyway, what I was going to say, um, like dating, um, I know dating had come up. I know blind uh, dating, you know, another blind person is good in other ways, but having a sighted person that you date does come in handy because they can help you with certain things that you may not be able to do or help you with transportation if you're in a bind or whatnot. Hello? Yeah. Yes, yeah, we hear it. Yeah, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh -huh. no, it's just it's my screen somehow is dim. Like, I'm not seeing you guys. It's like there's so, something going on here. <laughs> but um, anyways, uh, the perks of that about that, like um, – the relationship mm -hmm. I'm in right now with my BFF from work, um, so I'm, I'm I'm the first person you know who's blind to be dating her, and when we started, I showed her a lot of things, sighted guide and everything, and how I do certain things, and she found them very fascinating, um, and um, that's another good part. But one thing I wanted to bring up too, since we're on the subject of guide dogs and uh, walking and so forth in the neighborhood, I wanted to tell you all about a TV show that uh, might be suitable if that's okay with all of you. Of course. Mm -hmm. um, this actually has to do, too, with um, Jennifer's son, I think, too, with his eye condition and so forth, and how people have really are going out in the community and so forth. Uh, first of all, let me just ask this question. Um, do any of you, be, does anybody in this group use Netflix by any chance? Uh, yes. yes. Of course. Yes. Yes. yes, I do. Okay. Okay. For those who are animal lovers and who have a guide dog or whatnot, there is a really good TV show you absolutely must watch on Netflix in your spare time. It's called Pick of the Litter, if anyone oh, has heard of it. I've seen it, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, I have to, and I have to say, if, you, if for those who need more positivity right now, given what's been going on, for those of you who haven't seen it, <laughs> I really strongly recommend that you check it out. There is some really good stories to this. Yeah, great. And it shows people, you know, who like guys, you know, who are using your guide dog and um, the graduations and the milestones that go into place. Mm -hmm. I really recommend it. You guys check this out. I mean, it's very descriptive too for people like us, just to let you know for those who are wondering. That's Absolutely. awesome. Thank you so much Absolutely. for that recommendation. Thank you, Travis. Uh, Thank you. So you're you welcome. Uh, Hello. And I would Thank love you, your Travis. feedback when everyone checks out the Thank show um, when you? everyone has a chance. Absolutely. I'm good. I'm good. How is the thing down in here? I'm going to, uh, anyway, I thank you so much, Charles, for that. I really appreciate it. It's been an incredible evening slash afternoon. I want to thank Anna for joining us. You have an open invitation as well. Uh, Dave, and, and Anna, I'll, I'll get mm -hmm. Anna connected with, with, with us off, off, uh, offline. We'll do it an email Absolutely. and get caught up. Absolutely. Okay. Hopefully this was uh, helpful for you for your project. Yeah, absolutely. It's giving you some new ideas on how to incorporate and to build out this, uh, yeah. this um, wonderful I'll, platform. I'll give Dave all my contact details. So if anything, anybody has anything um, further they'd like to ask me or just suggest or just talk about or share a story. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. And before Dave gives us a little farewell piece of poetry, I want to uh, hold up here this cup here. It's uh, now become part of the archives. It's, uh, it's not just a uh, regular uh, venti latte from Starbucks. Um, it does say B Fox on it, but B Fox cup on a. Uh, this is a venti cup. Nothing in it right now, but uh, this was the cup that was uh, used and enjoyed last week at a local Starbucks here in the Baltimore area. That B Fox used together with ira to yep. create this experience so so give a shout out to distanced with ira that's right yeah so if you yeah guys, i watched the video it was a great event thank you so if you guys are not aware starbucks and ira you can use ira it's spelled a-i-r-a -A. it's a fantastic piece of technology where an agent can provide you assistance and be your eyes and I encourage everyone to go try it out. It's available in eight different cities. It's for free when you use it at Starbucks and amongst and many other places as well. Uh, but the Starbucks um, just recently started that collaboration. And, mm. um, and, you know, Dave, when, when you first started off with that first piece of poetry, we talked about misconceptions um, and creating the awareness. And the team at the Starbucks where we visited, it's an area called Roland Park here in the Baltimore area. The team, like, they just like, it was so new, blindness was completely new to them. 
and they welcomed us with really the open arms. They wanted to make the experience, you know, as enjoyable, pleasurable, and tasteful um, mm-hmm. as they would do it for anyone coming in. And, um, you know, they even went ahead and got a bowl of water for Regan, that's Orly's guide dog. And uh, it was just, it was, a, it was a great experience. So we're going to be going back out to Starbucks in the coming days together with the site loss support group of Baltimore and beyond. And we're going to be giving away some free drinks. So um, we will send an email out to everyone. So if you're in one of those eight participating cities where Ira and Starbucks are collaborating for this pilot program, I encourage everyone to go out and to uh, make it happen. So Dave, it's all yours. Yeah, listen, before we finish off, Barry uh, B. Fox, um, I, I, I will want you to do me a favor, if you will. I uh, just want to give a shameless plug to my new, all new YouTube channel, um, which launched earlier this week, which is going to be a channel uh, where all, a lot of, all the tea and poetry is going to be on Not there. Not a shameless plug. It's um, an important plug. Yeah, absolutely. All the tea and poetry on there. We're going to have new exclusive daily content of poetry and talking about things like we talk about. Um, Barry, if you could put a link out um, in the chat or send an we'll email out we'll send email out on the we'll call. So anyone that's out there, please, once you get the link, go on, like and subscribe and share this uh, YouTube channel because we want to kind of get this up and running. It's my first time going onto YouTube. Uh, been a long time coming, um, but we're, we're, we're there now. And, you know, I want, want to get this thing taken off and let's see how many more people outside of our community and inside of our community I can reach with the poetry. And um, I, just but I want to say, go ahead, you go. Sorry, go on. No, 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 go ahead, finish up. Yeah, I just want to say a massive thank you to Jennifer, to Anna, of course, to everyone that thank got you, involved thank you. tonight, you. Um, to all those people out there listening because the numbers are growing every week. And um, next week, we've got something really cool next week, which I'm not telling anyone about yet. And even the week after, <laughs> come on, I've got something really I don't, I don't cool even know. Well. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, the next two weeks, I've already got stuff lined up. Um, as far as the one the week after, uh, Barry, uh, I I would, I'm going to I'm going to say there there might be a tea and poetry on the, the 17th or the 18th. 17th or the 18th. Uh, there's a road trip that's going to be taking place here, so uh, yep. maybe we're going to have to figure that out and coordinate that to make sure scheduling works. Sure. I don't okay. even know about that, but I want to. Nope. Uh, before you uh, uh, close things out, I just want to say a big thank you to our executive producer this evening, Sedona Dave, for uh, coming through, doing an incredible job, setting up the studio, giving us the proper light, making us look great. And a uh, big shout out to Steven for our audio visual. Uh, make sure everything is sounding good. Can so, you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Testing. <laughs> so uh, thank you again, Steven. Thank you, Sedona Dave. Thank you, Dave, over in Manchester. Thank you, B-Fox. And thanks to all the wonderful guests and attendees tonight. And um, it's all yours, Dave. Okay, I'm gonna leave you with this. We've spoke of isolation, how at times we fail to cope. But remember that within us all remains a sense of hope. It's not about a distant cure we pray one day will come, but living this life to the full in the rays of glaring sun. Though anxious feelings are natural, there's no need to stay here long. In me and many others, you'll find a place that you belong. If it feels that no one understands the way that you see, sorry, if it feels that no one understands the way that you will see, you'll always find a friend that cares within this poetry. For I know far too well just how this loss can take its toll. It weighs upon your chest and seeps into your very soul. But I have won what blindness done, my life once more regained. With long white cane, erase the pain, and guide dog I have trained. So when our eyes are compromised by blur and endless haze, remember there's an answer, find your way out of this maze. For vision's loss ain't all of us, there's so much more to you, so go believe all you perceive, for if I can do, you can too. That is true. Go out there, everyone. Wrap up the week on a high note. Look forward to seeing everyone next week, Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining us. Please share. Get the word out there. TM Poetry, Wednesdays, 4 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Manchester, United Kingdom. Sing 
Farewell from Timonium, Maryland. Dave, peace out. Love you. Love you too. Talk to you. Absolutely. Love you guys. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Bye. Take care. Bye. Guys. Bye.